and Elevation Radio. Hello, Baltimore, D.C., and Virginia, and the globe. Shout with us. Praise the Lord. This is uh, the Elevation Radio 1, uh, and we are happy to be here tonight. A uh, special broadcast uh, here on Tuesday night, the day after uh, uh, We are t- subject matter is Baltimore's Best, and uh, the theme will be uh, entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship 101. Do you know what it's all about? And so it's important to know that as we, uh, especially in this pandemic time, we have um, have to re re rearrange into life to rather do things. The, the traditional nine to five is not working. This uh, maybe it's too dangerous to go to the office, and so now you need to get the bills paid, get a way to uh, keep the lights on. My goodness! And so now maybe a time to do uh, some passion that you've always thought about. Uh, this is the time. And that's important. And so, Baltimore's best. We are looking at number one. And so, I'm going to go to the and right to Queen. Queen. No, she's not. Okay. Do I have my illustrious co host? Yeah, well, I'd have well, to call in. Can you hear me? <laughs> Why are you Because that's what you are. You are a VIP. You with the Moses. And an expert on this subject matter, which is very important. I think the Queen has now arrived. Thank God. Give me a second. Okay, here. can you? Here. All right. Dear Jesus, can you please read Proverbs 10 and 4, please? Yes. The verse to rehearse. Okay. Say hello to the audience. Greetings, everyone. Did you say hello to uh, Dr. McKenzie? Oh, greetings, Dr. McKenzie. How are you? Start coming up. Good evening. Mm-hmm. Okay. My phone is, is not coming up. For whatever reason, I don't know why. All right, technical difficulties. Uh, so we just go yeah. right ahead. And that is uh, Proverbs, thank God for paper. And Proverbs 10 and 4 talks about lazy hands make for poverty. And if you're lazy, you don't want to work all day and, and get up afternoon and everything else and on a regular basis, you're going to be homeless, poor. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. And so uh, say hello to the, uh, to the listening audience, uh, to the uh, ever, ever vivacious uh, Dr. Leroy Menzi, Jr. How are you, sir? Hey, I'm doing excellent. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Got to, got, to, got, to, got to give him praise first and foremost, but I'm doing quite all right. How about yourself, doctor? I'm uh, I'm living on his grace, sir. And so, uh, matter of fact, uh, if anyone's opinion, if, if anyone thinks that they are are a, a, one of Baltimore's best entrepreneurs, they can call in at one four five three five three, and we'll give you a shout out for your business one nine one four two zero five five three five three. If you if you believe that you're one of Baltimore's best entrepreneurs, yeah, that's important. My let me start it off by saying, Praise Unlimited Ministries Incorporated, uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> one four one oh, uh, one of Baltimore's best, been, been that way since 1994 on it. Yeah, proud of it. Thank God for it. Yeah, what you got there, Dr. McKenzie? Well, it would be JNF Enterprises. Uh, uh, is it? Okay. Is there a, an echo? I'm getting some feedback. No, sir. Feedback. No, sir. I, I, I know 
I hope the program's not wiretapped, but uh, otherwise not, no. <laughs> Knowing you, it is. Knowing you, it is. <laughs> you know they always. I may have a few, a few. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got a few, you got a few incog- incognito uh, listeners, so. I always yeah, feel like surprise. somebody's watching me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Rockwell. <laughs> okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, what is, uh, if you had to say, a or entrepreneurship, uh, since you are an expert in the field, what would you say? How would you find it? How would I define entrepreneurship? Yes, sir. Um, it is it is the individual who takes on the responsibility and the risk of of ownership of a business, ownership and man, ownership management and running of a business. That's that would be mm. my short definition of it. Okay. Well. And that is, uh, do you agree, Queen? Do you think he's right? Uh huh. Yeah, I do. You're not just saying that because you like Dr. Kensington. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, um, all right. He, he is correct. If you believe, if you side with Dr. McKenzie, you can call us at 1425 Entrepreneurship, um, uh, has several components in it, and it's not for the for the scared or the uh, for the weak. Um, not at actually, all. Actually, the word you don't know. I tell you, entrepreneurship is when you're hanging out there by yourself or with God only, out in the middle of the water. <laughs> and it's usually when He calls you away from your profession, as really a Christian entrepreneurship uh, calls you from it, uh, or if you don't believe it, He calls. Uh, it leaves you, and you have to um, survive on an idea, and take the idea from vision, which is what we call vision, to actually fruition. And according to DirectHit.com, uh, they are talking about uh, on a website how to entrepreneur. It's a it's a lifestyle, mm-hmm. and um, it's very important. And so. Um, and something called Pondo, P-O-N-D-O, web.com, talks about the entrepreneur business. So these are good sites to look up to uh, take it further. I was, uh, I got excited for a second, Dr. McKenzie. Yes. Yep. Oh, Dr. McKenzie, follow the scripture. I said I got excited. For a moment. Ask me why. Yeah, because you're breaking up really bad. Yeah. Why? Okay, I got excited because I, I found on the website a, a website that our organization Baltimore, an EO, Baltimore, and it had 14,000 influential businesses that uh, were part of it, including M&T Bank, which I got excited. And uh, it has uh, 195 chapters in 12 countries. And oh, wow. They uh, wow. actually offered offered membership. Even excited, mm. and I got excited okay. even more when I knew that in the membership I could join it. Um, if I had found it or, or or was a co-founder of the business, or an owner, I was I was ecstatic until something happened. <laughs> Would you read? <laughs> I read the fourth requirement. And uh, then I was deflated <laughs> like a tire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what you had to do to be a member, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. I, mm. it, said, it said that I had to gross in my business more than $1 million annually. Uh, uh, like, uh, come yep. on, man. I, tell you, I threw the papers down. Well, that ain't, that ain't <laughs> nothing but pennies in, a, pennies in a barrel to you. No, sir. You talk about yourself. <laughs> Uh, Mr. That's VIP, you, you like, okay. Global Trotter, <laughs> Mr. Bitcoin. <laughs> Can you say bullion? <laughs> and so, uh, 
And I'm, I'm going to tell you, the person's got all the money. Dr. McKenzie is not us. It's, it's, it's I mean, she's got the money. What? So I love you. <laughs> and so. <laughs> no, I don't. So, yeah, I, I had to have uh, $1 million annually. Of, uh, boost. I mean, boost. So I was like, mm-hmm. okay, mm-hmm. this is not going to work. So I got frustrated. I uh, threw the papers down. Uh, then I went on to something else, and so I, <laughs> I, uh, I, I said, uh, I said, uh, Hallelujah, Jesus, oh, please. I went to uh, another, kept kept searching, kept on searching until I came across something called Startup Grind, Grind com. So if if you don't okay. know what Grind is, G R I N D, tell them what Grind is, Doctor McKenzie. Oh, that's when you when you when you put network in on your you know for your for your business you're out networking you're out um, doing dealing with your clients you're actually being um, what I call being productive you know in your mm. productive in in your business or being productive um, growing your business so mm. that's what's on your okay. what that to me what's being on your grind is. So that that sound that sound kind of uh, kind of hip hopish and whatnot. I'm on my grind, yo. In the twenty first century. <laughs> in the twenty first century, oh, get with my, it. My wife is looking. My wife is looking like, uh, oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> I'm on my grind, baby. <laughs> so yes, sir. Uh, and so startupgrind.com talks about those kind of things, and they're offering okay. actually on the September twenty third. Uh, a a webinar, yeah, you know, we, since we're going to the digital really? world, okay. have to learn these terms, webinar, uh, on sales for founders, for founders, for folks who have the vision. Grind? Yeah, startupgrind.com. And uh, if, if you would like to be a part of that, you can call in at one nine one four two zero five three five three. God bless you. And um, as we move forward, uh, there is something else called biz, B-I-Z dot Yelp, Y-E-L-P, and uh, that is for getting your business listed, so, <laughs> which is very important. If they're going to contact you and you're going to get some, at least at least get some audience, and, uh, at least be considered in the game, you've got to at least be listed somewhere. Good God, I mean, is that important, Dr. McKenzie? Well, it's very important. It's, it's the only way that you're able to um, kind of – you're kind of – the only way for you to be able to grow your brand, you, your business and your, and your brand is to uh, incorporate a uh, part of your – part of what you do, part of your strategy should be networking. And that's being uh, in uh, events like you just mentioned. Um, figuring mm-hmm. out what uh, whether or not they're one, whether or not they have your target audience. I mean, they, they don't have to necessarily. This one, the ones that you just mentioned don't necessarily have to have your target audience because this is to help you with your business. This is to help you to be able to network um, business to business because this, this, the the two that you just named sound like that they're going to have other entrepreneurs there, not other um, people looking to purchase products or services and stuff. So. Um, but doing the business to business um networking is just impo- as important and being at those events as it is at, at being at an event as a as a sponsor or a partner uh or anything like that because it gives you the exposure that you need and that's what you need because you'll be able to, you should be using those two events like you just mentioned to be able to um to grow relationships because oh um relationships or resources. So uh, um yeah, relationships or resources. So you have to have uh you have to develop relationships with other like minded people. One, because it's great to be around other entrepreneurs, um, because you may have a product or service that they can refer um, the people that they know that are in their network, and then you can vice versa do the same thing. They, you may know some people in your network that need their particular product or service. So, um, mm-hmm. by 
by being able to be in those kind of, at those kind of events or attending those kind of um those kind of things or being in that network you're able to um you're able to network with um with other entrepreneurs and you're able to gain uh relationships hopefully you'll be able to develop those relationships from uh from that now we you these are excellent points and I thank you uh Dr. McKenzie uh, junior, uh, I uh, had a mentor that said to me uh, years ago that anybody that comes within six feet has a flyer or a business card. <laughs> uh, we, we now do we now do uh, panic where you got to stay away from me six feet, but uh, uh, still room <laughs> for. <it. laughs> The business card, I'll tell you. Now it's mandatory. So, uh, They're not gonna get within six feet of you, you know. I tell you, I tell you, um, there is a uh, uh, for entrepreneurs who are nine to five and find themselves uh, uh, they made two jobs now you're on down to one job. Some have no job. What you gonna do? How you gonna pay them bills? You gonna need prayer. You gonna need God, and you gonna need <laughs> an idea. Yes, indeed. And yep. so eTOR, eTOR, T-O-U-R, dot com, is, uh, helps entrepreneurs to develop uh, idea to the uh, stages. Pretty, pretty exciting. So you need to go there and check it out, eTOR.com. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's very important to uh, note uh, that uh, I, I, I'll have a, a story that I was actually going through some Hard uh, issues uh, uh, years ago, and um, I decided I had only ten dollars in my pocket. <laughs> and I said, "Well, I'll either uh, I'll go to this uh, this uh, was this uh, what do you call it? Uh, it was at Hilton Hotel, Pikesville Hilton, uh, motivational Mondays speak, speak uh, situation, or I'll go get the widow woman and die." And I decided to live, but go there and it's the last time and just go and hang around some positive people. And that's all I did. And because that's what it cost you ten dollars. So I listened to the messages and all that and I ended up uh hanging around because I had nowhere else to go. I worried that I did I had married the queen. And so I was by myself. And so I was around and there was no sense going home. So I stayed there and ended up saying somebody and I thought I recognized I went to Hey, hello, sir. How are you? How do you feel? And he says, I'm fine. And yourself? I said, what are you from? And we started figuring out, you know, it's a church with the so on, so on, so on. Uh, finally, he said, did you ever apply for your job at the prison office? I said, I surely did. I didn't get it. He said, yeah, you didn't. Uh, I, don't like it. I was in that room and I, I interviewed. I was in one of the interviews. And now I'm the director. And I brought you in your presentation. So I want to hire you, and I'm gonna tell you exactly how. It so uh, everything can happen. Positivity, <laughs> and so God was into positivity, and uh, for an entrepreneurship, end up with an employment, <laughs> which later helped me uh, fund my entrepreneurship, which is important. You need funding. Is that important, Doctor uh, McKenzie? <laughs> it is honestly it is one it, it is virtually the number one issue i believe for the um for those entrepreneurs in our community um when you ask them across the board most of most of them i would say a a good 8 8 out of 10 maybe even 9 out of 10 um the the major issue is going to be financing um, they need capital, um, and and that's one of the things I think that we need to work on as entrepreneurs is mm. understanding um, understanding money, and then understanding um, capital, uh, and understanding how 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 to raise it, how to collectively um, come together, and you know, and possibly partner to you know to to do certain ventures and stuff like that. Um, Mm -hmm. and even, you know, put a plan together to be able to, if you don't, if you don't necessarily have the money yourself to come to, um, uh, 
um, come, you know, think about and put a plan together to be able to get the money using other you people's take, money. You didn't <laughs> take a plan. What other communities do. So, you know, so we can do this. You can do the same thing. Um, I was on a, on a call last night. Um, and the brother was talking about um, in investing, real estate investing, you know, with, um, uh, and he, he was from, now check this out, he was from, he was in, I want to say Florida. Was it Florida? No, he was in Tennessee. I'm sorry. He's in Tennessee, mind you. He said he was on the phone call with other uh, investors, and they're talking about the cities that are going to be going through um this uptick in um in real estate in the real estate boom right guess which city was one of the cities that he mentioned that they talked about buying doing investing in uh Baltimore yes sir <laughs> and here's what he was saying something as simple as and he said it took he said it's about i think 3 to 5 of them maybe that came together and said, you know, he said, what if if we get together, because they were talking about making sure that everybody, you know, that you, that you get your uh, credit score where it needs to be so that you could actually partner with other folks that have that 700-plus credit score. And mm. if each of you go into the bank, because if you have the good mm. credit score, then you can what? You can borrow the money. Yes, sir. If, and, and I'll give you an example. Um, me, you, um, your, your your wife, and let's say three three other people, right? We get a total of six of us. Each of us goes in, and we all have above 700 credit scores, and we all go in to borrow or get a line of credit of, let's say, um, let's say $25,000. Mm-hmm. That right there is – is at a minimum, at a minimum, at 25,000, well, let's say 20,000, 20,000 times six is what? 180, I mean, 120, I'm sorry, 100, $120,000 that we have in, uh, in money that we can now use to do and go buy a, a, a couple of properties, if not, you know, a property. We take that property, flip it. And then we're able to borrow against that property, get that property. We're able to now use the, you know, use the money that we got in fixing that property up to be able to borrow, you know, and we buy the block. Yeah, right. The and we talk, he, and we were talking about in terms of buying the block here in Baltimore. And I remember years ago, my buddy and I, one of my closest friends and I, a couple of us, we talked about doing that very thing. We were like, man, we could buy blocks. Of, of of streets here in Baltimore, and and do so much for the community. What stopped you? And everything. So, huh? What stopped you? Well, I guess the the way that life, you know, you 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 plan for things because this was like I think when we were in college or right out of college. So it was mm-hmm. what we wanted to do, <laughs> but we didn't have the ability at that time to be honest with you. So yeah. it's still on it's still on my to do list. And and now I'm in a uh, in a better position to be able to to be able to get with others to be able to say hey let's do that let's find a let's find an area in in Baltimore and and since then my um my close friend the, the good friend he's passed away but that idea is still there I have two ideas that I really want to bring to fruition one is that one which is bringing by the block you know which is where we find an area in Baltimore. That of course, like you know, there are plenty of areas in Baltimore that have just blocks of boarded up houses and everything Park like heights. that. Uh, right, that the city either owns or um, or are you know the the landlords are slumlords. So we're, oh, we're let, me, let me get, stop right there. Let me stop right uh-huh. there. Most of the slumlords in Northwest Baltimore and um, the mayor. Uh, which is your mayor, Jack Young, uh, has not done anything to stop the, right. the generational spiral, uh, along with Stephanie Ross Blake, Catherine Pugh. Uh, mm-hmm. um, uh, so it's just been a, a. Now, of course, if they took the money from John Thomas <laughs> and charged him right. water bills, right. 
<laughs> what right. might, would have this situation. And I'm, I'm wondering yeah, uh, who can. That you know, right. Mm-hmm. Exactly, because if you take a look at that, if you take a look at Baltimore, who owns East Baltimore, Hopkins? Who owns, yep. where's, who, uh, what is that area? Is that South Baltimore where, where University of Maryland is? Is that considered South Baltimore? Uh, Pigtown, yes. Okay, so, so that area is South Baltimore. University of Maryland owns that pocket. This is what they're right. buying up right now. Yeah, this is what we're doing. Right. They're buying up right now. You know, this is a hospital they're, they're, town. Hopkins. Yeah, exactly. Hopkins got 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 east east side on lock. Um, University of Maryland has 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 south on lock. Um, west Baltimore. I don't think anyone is is um, picking up that corridor yet. The way you got but, University of Maryland. Yeah, University of Maryland is moving up that up up that and, corridor. And, and yeah, Maryland General also. Right. Maryland okay, General is okay. right there yeah, before yeah. you get to uh, the state building. Yeah, they got that. Right. Uh, and then you've got two one two oh five or two one two one five and some other uh, Devitas as a sub mm-hmm. for kidney dialysis. All that's influenced, yeah. and uh, Warren Buffington is actually. Entrepreneur and is uh, actually getting eight hundred dollars a share on that situation. And don't forget about down in in that um, in that Hanover area, Under Armour has that area down there. Uh, with, um, yeah, he's trying to tell it. Yeah, what they you know with That's what right. they're trying to do. So you have these these big corporations that are trying to do things in and around the city. I think it's it's key for us to be able to as 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 the small business entrepreneurs to be able to say and, and us as our community to say, you know what, no, nah, we're gonna you know, we're gonna do this. Um, use the, the concept and the and the black print, what I call the, the, the black Wall Street black print to be able to to be able to do that ver do that same thing. You didn't just say but black. We have to be willing to on the radio. Be willing to work together, though. You know. You didn't say black on the radio, did you? Uh, yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's Indeed. just unheard of. Did you get permission from Donald Trump to use that word black? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I ain't looking to get no no <laughs> nothing oh. uh no kind of approval from from that man. Please. Uh, I wish he would. Uh, let me see here. What's your what's your take on the whole thing? I mean, say, say that again. The queen, what's her opinion on the oh, whole thing? Me? Oh, yeah. Y- uh, yeah, you're you you're part of, you're a co-host on the show, aren't you? What was, what was the, what, what did you say? So this means you weren't paying attention to anything that we were talking about. I can't. You're breaking up. What are you saying? Now, I'm not breaking up like you say I'm breaking up. I said that – so you heard nothing that we talked about? I heard some. <laughs> so, all right. But what's your opinion uh, of the work necessary for They have better than me. You're breaking up so bad. Uh, you're chopping up. What are you saying? I'm sorry. You really chopped I it didn't up. ask you all that. I asked you a question. The question I asked you, I don't female entrepreneurs. I heard the word entrepreneur. That was it. That's the first level. Start the business. And uh, Okay, you back with us? Yeah, yeah. Dr. McKenzie? Okay, all right. Yeah, can you uh, hear me? Yeah, I got you. I got you. Uh, and and uh, I was saying that there are four different entities to uh, become an entrepreneur, and that one is uh, starting a business to actually make a decision to get started, actually do it, <laughs> get started. 
Yep. That's the hardest one to do. What do you think? Well, I think I think it's the I think it's one of the hardest. I think the other thing is to remain consistent. I think uh, people, you had to people go there. Get, people, <laughs> yeah, but 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 that's yeah, being real though, because a lot of people yeah. wanna wanna they they get all you know they get all hyped and and get all let's go let's go let's go, and they start, but then <laughs> then they they find out how hard it is to be an entrepreneur, mm. Mm. and and it's they lonely. and they don't realize and understand the effort that it takes. In order to be an entrepreneur, and I tell people that it, being an entrepreneur is is one of the hardest things that you will ever do, and it's not meant for everybody. It'll have you, you know, on your knees or curled up like a baby, crying, <laughs> trying to figure out why you why you doing this thing, you know. And 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 the reality is, it will, you know, it will it will be like Mike Tyson walking up to you and punching you in your face, you know. It, it, and and the question is is do you have what it takes in order to be able to get back up? Because mm. I know you know it'll knock you down. It will. It, uh, you're gonna get knocked down. Can you imagine trying to yeah. run uh, a, a, a micro enterprise, one or two micro enterprise businesses, or three or four, while you're while you're going through health issues, while you're going through divorce, yep. while you're going through uh, yep. you've lost your main employment job. <laughs> and so, yep. Uh, so let me say here, um, God gave me uh, when I was actually working to work for it. Uh, didn't work out at all. In the same, uh, mm-hmm. on the it's a true life story of uh, staples uh, from the funeral home uh, or funeral parlor or whatever. As a sales rep, and it didn't work out, so I. Looked up and I saw the sign that I saw every day, but today, but that day was different. It was a guy that spoke to me, so and it says a thousand mm. business cards for ten dollars. So I looked in my pocket and I was going to do a, another thing, take the last ten dollars I had and go get some Popeye chicken and die. And I looked <laughs> and I said, "Let me go." God was telling me, "Go in, and, go in there, and take that ten dollars bill and go in there and start a business." So I, I asked him how much it was. It's nine ninety nine. So I took every penny I had. And so I got the business card. Mm. I said, name of the business. I have no idea. <laughs> and so, but that's wow. what Crazy Women started from. Um, and wow. um, and uh, I've had some nights where I'm just looking at uh, trying to figure out how we're going to survive, how we're going to manage it, how we're going to mm-hmm. uh, make it at the growth and, and to getting an identity, doing stuff that no, nobody else ever done, not knowing I was doing it. I uh, put magnets on my car because I got it from corporate America when I was out selling and doing that for gospel music. And people laughed at me that I was crazy. And, and now everybody else is doing it. Mm. So it being, you know, kind of mm-hmm. like a trendsetter. Right. But, uh, I've had concerts where I gave up, I uh, spent thousands of dollars. And when I looked at the, uh, when I sat and did the math and realized how much I spent trying to put that mm-hmm. together, an idea that God had put it for me, I was mad. I was mad at God. How dare you? Could you? <laughs> My wife knew how much money I spent. She would she would divorce me, and then uh, and then I would, <laughs> he said uh, he said keep writing. So I kept writing, and then I realized he put every penny back. I broke even. So I'm like mm. okay. So it's like that. I said it's like that. He said it's like that, and I realized I found out that God is gangster because he said it's like that, yo. Oh yes, sir. He's the gangster <laughs> of all gangsters. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> You can't out, out gangster the original gangster. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> this is how this is how gangster he is. Wait, he how said, gangster is this? He he told he told he told Lucifer, I don't want you here because I'm the only one that run this place. He said, Now go <laughs> on. We gonna put you. I'm gonna put you where I want to put you, and then you stay there until I come back for you. How about that? Oh. Okay, okay. When, when he told, he's, he made mention to uh, about how bad he was. He said, I swear by my own self, you, you, you know you bad. <laughs> what you got? No, I got you got lady, 
Oh, okay. Yes, sir. I got another one for you. When Joe ahead, start sir. running his mouth, saying, I he wish I knew where he was, he said, I'm right here. Now tell me where were you when I created all of this? Where were you when when darkness was upon the earth? Tell me that ain't gang. Oh. <laughs> oh. So you, you, t- you took mine because I was going to say, because he said, uh, girl, before you still there? Can you hear me? You hear me at all? Yes, I can just, just start talking. Just start talking, woman. Can you, can, you, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear your lovely voice. Do you have something to add? <laughs> what are you? What are you? What are you asking? I'm saying. Do you have something about this? Thank you, said. Do I have some? Some I don't know. Have something to add to what we were talking about? Oh no! No, tell me. You mean you took me through all that for that? Yeah. She thinks that's funny. Um, let me move on, please. Dr. McKenzie, you know, no goes through. Uh, <laughs> so after you start the business, dear God in heaven, you have to run the business and have to learn all about how to maintain it, hiring and Absolutely. maintaining staff. And and uh, says he obtained second round funding. I I got the first round. <laughs> <laughs> so the second round. Uh, right, right, exactly. <laughs> Donations, please. <laughs> so, very important. <laughs> Running a business can uh, start in the morning. And if you're a micro enterprise, an army of one, you'll be running it till um, wee hours of the, of the night. <laughs> it's actually working a nine to five is much easier. <laughs> yeah, oh, and then we got. Not a lot of nine to five. That's yes, for sure. My wife asked me often, why are you still like a computer? Why are you still like a computer? Like, well, how do you think you get what you get? If I went on this computer, it was summer, nothing be happening. Uh, uh, sales and marketing. Let me stop right there. Let me throw my hands up. Can you define sales and marketing, sir? Because that's most of, 90% of my time is spent trying to get sales and you know, most time are marketing. Right, right. Well, sales is how can I put this? The sales is actually um, having your product. Um, the sales is actually having your product or service um, be the answer to someone's problem. Marketing is how you show someone that your that product have or service is the uh-huh. answer to your pro- is to someone's problem. Well, Every that's business very, uh, is like the that. answer to someone's problem. Mm-hmm. Every business, Just like, every business is the answer the to someone's question. problem. Yeah. The question, that's, that's is, what... the question is, who are you the answer for? Oh, watch yourself, sir. Watch yourself. Don't get too deep. Okay. <laughs> uh. <laughs> right. My uh, my life was going along. Uh, I was flatlining until God decided to give me the answer to my problems, which is my wife, Leor. Ah, there it is. Yeah, mm. that deserves that deserves some sugar. <laughs> and so uh, yeah. we're talking about that was we're, we're, talking about, we're talking about offline, yeah. offline. If she wasn't on sale yeah. either. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so and so. Uh, it says here you also have to have business ideas, and so you have to identify your business. Are you a retail, a direct sale? Are you a uh, service business? What is your thing? It's very important. Now, and there are 100 Bible verses about entrepreneurship. Did anyone know that? Mm-hmm. I didn't know the exact number, but I knew that they, yeah, it was quite a few. Okay. And there are actually at least 10 Bible verses that every entrepreneur should, needs to know, according to Jeff Rose, written 
July seventh uh, of this year, and one of them was like the first rehearsed. My wife, yeah, one of those was by uh, what my wife wife read was "Lazy Hands uh, uh, Will Lead to Poverty," Proverbs ten and four. You can't be you lazy. Those and, written down. Well, can I find them? Uh, listen, listen yeah, it's on a. I'm so glad you asked me, sir. That's why you're who you are. Good financial sense. Good financial sense. C e n t s dot com has the ten verses for every entrepreneur needs to know. And um, uh huh, he's he's actually getting the information. And if you want the information, you can call in at one nine one four two zero five five three five three. We've got another one here. It says, "Do not toil." to gain wealth. Wow, don't work for wealth. But be mm. uh mm, but be discerning enough to dissent, which means to know how to uh avoid a lot of these get rich quick stuff. Mm. It amazes me how many churches you are trying to get rich and won't read the Bible, but they'll be all up in videos and, <laughs> and whatnot. And that is Proverbs 23 and 4. Got another one here. It says sluggard. How to get rich quick. No, sir. Sluggard, do not uh, do not uh, plow in season. Uh, so uh, at harvest time, they look for the harvest and can't find anything. <laughs> because they didn't do anything. Nothing for nothing leaves nothing. And that's Proverbs again, 20. And four. Uh, number of your business, uh, Dr. McKenzie. Say, say that again. I mean, the number for your business. The number for my business? Yes. Sure. It's 443 762 You got to remember, you're breaking up. So you're, you're trying to help. Coming you're in trying, and out. But you're trying, Spotting, yeah. you're trying to help. Me. You try to help people, and this is what they do. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Leora, Leora Tana, yes. What is the name of you? What is your business? What's your business name? The phone number. <laughs> www.shopfreemarket.com forward slash Leora Turner one nine five six. The phone number is four one zero five eight eight nine zero five zero. You have health and beauty products, right? Yes, they are. All right. Only call my wife for health and beauty products. <laughs> so if you're looking for the best uh, on-call organist uh, that you've ever heard in your life, yeah, I'm, I'm going that, that far. You call at one four one zero three zero two two seven three seven for the on-call organist. Good God Almighty. Look at our new website, www.ultimatepraise.us, allpraise.us. On this program on Saturday will be Mr. Willie, world-famous fields, uh, music phenom and prodigy from Polly. We're going to have a Polly party of Polly uh, City Nights Allowed. You will be talked about viciously here on this program. But we want to let you know that God is in. And still have fun. Still be Christian this time. God bless you. And so, uh, Dr. McKenzie, are you a Christian, sir? Oh, absolutely. Every day, all day. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Very good. Uh, Leo, are you a Christian? 100%. Man, she, Dr. McKenzie, she's so, she's so much a Christian. I asked her to pray before we pull off in the car to go to for our day. And uh, she gets into this kind of, I mean, just want a short prayer, Dr. McKenzie. But she gets into this, dear God in heaven, thank you for what you've done for me. Thank you for your love and your kindness and your sweetness. And, uh, thank you for your mercy <laughs> from the clay hills of Georgia. Thank you for the red mud, and, which made me believe from our, we brought in our Holy Spirit. Thank you. I said, can you just pray? It was a short prayer. I'd like to get there where I need to go. I mean, sometime today. Uh, can you be too much of a Christian? Can you be too deep? Can you be too holy? I do not. <laughs> That's all right. And so, uh, yeah. All right. Uh, anything new coming up real quick? Dr. McKenzie Jr. 
Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I have a couple things. This month, um, for uh, this is a busy month. I have um, coming up this Thursday. Uh, I have an interview with Miss Shana uh, Jefferson on the Brand New Development series, and we're gonna be, and it's ironic we're talking about entrepreneurship tonight. But oh. uh, her and I will be. She's a psych, psychotherapist, which I think I'm gonna give her your number too, so you know so you, you can you know get, <laughs> get something help. Um, I got problems. I got issues. Um, yeah, yeah. What about? Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but we're gonna be having the discussion on the uh the cost of entrepreneurship talking about mental the mental cost of entrepreneurship mm. and and what it Heavy. takes mentally yeah mm. mentally to 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 be involved in mm. in entrepreneurship and and um cuz cuz folks this entrepreneurship thing it, it'll eat you up and spit you back out if you're not careful and especially in the time that we're in right now because you have a well, lot of businesses that that have mm-hmm. you know that have had to close, you know, due what, to the pandemic that we're dealing with. So what about this? What, how do you what about when that? your What about when your spouse does not support you in your entrepreneur business? Absolutely, Woo. absolutely. Woo. I, I ain't, ain't talking about that? my wife. I was talking about somebody else. <laughs> I was just saying. <laughs> yeah, but there's a there's a mental cost. I better cut this off before we. Should. Yeah. So, I better cut it off before it, you get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, so it's gonna, it's going to be a great conversation this coming Thursday um, at 7 p.m. Uh, on okay. uh, uh, Zoom and Facebook Live, uh, and then um, there's the um, the Authors Expo that's coming up on the ninth the nineteenth. Is it? Yeah, the nineteenth. Um, the Authors Expo from one to four, which is virtually every uh, again, and then um, uh, there's a I'm doing a a presentation on the uh, on the twenty uh, on the twenty six for um, write that book that's inside of you. We're going to be discussing um, the tools needed, uh, the seven tools needed in order to be able to write that book that's inside you. So those are just a couple of things coming up this month. I'm sorry, the 26th is the CBO conference, the, the Christian Business Owners uh, Summit that's coming up. Oh, that's a virtual event okay. as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, you got a lot of, um, lot of good things. I got like sure. four events. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah, You're always doing a something. Things. September. Yeah, September is September is uh, is full uh, when it comes to events um, and everything. So okay. it, it's it's about it's about um, you know, getting your getting and keeping your business out there and, and understanding like we talked about tonight, what it you know, how to start up or even how to grow your, your business, your brand, you your business and your brand. Um those things. So Well, yeah. not to be out outdone as the uh, music man here, but we are going to be mm-hmm. on the nineteenth, uh interviewing uh one uh Brandon Scott who's um attempting what? to become the uh, fire and brimstone. <laughs> so, yes, sir. The mir- oh, miracle was happening. Speaking of which, um, huh? you said the 19th at 5:30, right? Yes, sir. All right. Okay. I'm gonna have to make sure. sure I'm. I'm. I'm make sure. Make sure. I'm. I'm. I'm in my seat for this one. So. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so but every, I don't know. Listen. You, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if every you saw activist, two things. Huh? They had a town hall. About a, maybe a week ago, maybe a week or two ago. Are um, you starting to transfer trouble got, as we end this program, sir? I feel that you are. Yep. Yep. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not starting trouble. Um, Brandon okay. Scott, um, Robert Wallace, who is a businessman, for those that don't know, here in Baltimore City. Bob and um, the pastor Wright that was on the show Shannon a couple Wright. weeks ago. Yes, yes indeed. Shannon Wright. She they had a town hall and they um it, this was sponsored by the Greater um Greater Baltimore Black uh Chamber of Commerce. Are you and uh, should I be sitting yeah, down for this Because uh, I feel something heavy is about to drop. Oh no 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 no. I'm just saying they they were on there. They were on they were on that to doing the okay. town hall and then I sent you um Pastor Wright was on um Let's Talk Baltimore. Um, the uh, I think last week, 
um, being interviewed by her name is Lady J, which is uh, Charlene uh, Jenkins is her name. She's um, the owner, a uh, co-owner of um, Worldwide Flavor Network uh, uh, Radio Network, um, and Lady and Pastor Sharon Wright was on there um, okay. talking about the city and all of those mm. things. So um, it's they're, they're in that in that mode right now to be able to get as much airtime as they can to be able to. Um, inform people of their platforms and and what they you know kind of what they stand for. So um, I'm I'm anxious to hear what um, Brother Brandon Scott has to say on the show. Well, he night. can only say uh, based on the questions that are being asked of him, and and so I, I solicit you to get your questions together, and I solicit mm-hmm. any uh, citizen of Baltimore, any activist. Mm-hmm that has ears yep. to hear that always wanted to ask a question. Uh, you've got a pertinent question. You've got a burning question. I suggest you uh, let it out on the 19th. Send it in. Call this number, one nine one four two zero five five three five three. 214 The line should be, should be lined up, backed up, stacked up for this one, okay? Because uh, you may not, get, may not get any other opportunity to ask the man directly what his yep. stance is on various issues that affect you and your children and, and everybody else, your parents, everybody. So uh, I suggest you do that. And um, so we love this team and uh, to uh, support that. Good amount of money. So notice, uh, I think I left this set. Uh, did you want to say that song, Queen? Um, no. No. I mean, per capita, you haven't done that much talk here. It would be a song. Yeah. She's just so pink or anything. Can you do the normal life is worth living? All right, then. then now, uh, to the airwaves, to the globe. To you, my lovely wife, First Lady Leora, in a in a original poem uh, called "Life Is Worth Living," and always worth living. Ready? Go ahead. Life, life is worth living, wherever you are, deep in a dungeon or high on a star. Life is worth living. It all has its plan. When God knows you're giving the best that you can. So just pray when you're happy and pray when you're feeling blue. For life is worth living when God lives with you. See you Oh. Yeah, right. Up, what are you, you saying? Breaking up way too much. Yeah. I said. I said. What? Uh, what did you think of that? That's what I'm saying. I couldn't. I couldn't hear everything she was saying because it was breaking up. It was breaking up too much. Oh, you didn't hear me? No. Oh wow. Well, do it again. Double take. Life is worth living. Wherever you are, deep in a dungeon or high on a star, life is worth living. It all has its plan when God knows you're giving the best that you can. So pray when you're happy and pray when you're feeling blue. For life is worth living when God lives with you. Selah. Mm. Oh, that. did you say Selah? Like he just dropped the yeah, Selah he, Hebrew. He said Selah. Go ahead, now. Yeah, I didn't know she knew that. <laughs> all that Bible study is paying off, I tell you, this is all right. Well, I may have to come out there and reward you. Let me get rid of right. Kenzie and everybody. <laughs> and yeah, so, absolutely. You ain't got to get rid of me. <laughs> I'm gone. It's sugar time. <laughs> I'm ghost. <laughs> <laughs> no, he did not. <laughs> Did you hear, I'm sorry. Queen, did you hear what he just said? 
that you don't you don't you like to get rid of him? No, I want to get rid of him. No, I he uh, he said he was ghost. <laughs> I mean, ghost. you know, that's that's yeah, that's real hip hop. It's like saying it's okay. Gucci, baby. Yes, sir. So you know, um, <laughs> you know uh, <laughs> let me go. <laughs> so thank you again for uh, tuning in to uh, the crazy, the uh, effervescent, the um, just an example of uh, the gloriousness of God and how wonderful He is. Uh, we dropped by just to encourage you, entrepreneur. Dropped by to encourage you. No, you can do it. You can get uh, the word entrepreneur. Also means this angel. So if you are starting an entrepreneurial business, the Army of One, Michael Enterprise, you are God's angel on the earth. So never let anybody talk you down and tell you you're not valuable because you are. Keep on, keep on toiling, keep on grinding, as Dr. McKenzie would say, and keep on having the faith uh, to do read proverbs and learn more about the entrepreneur spirit. You can make it. It's going to be all right. God bless you. And in the memory of one of the greatest entrepreneurs of all times, uh, Claudette Whelan, and to uh, Larry Whelan, God bless you for entrepreneurs on the go. See you.